Okay, Fab Five question number four. Um, I'll get to in just a moment. Let me just go back for just a second and give you a little bit more information about question number one, two, and three. Remember question number one is, what is it about your current home that has prompted you to visit us today? You can ask that question sometime within the first 60 seconds of your introduction and saying hello. That question is perfectly fine to ask right out front uh, and to get that whole questioning process in, in, in place, all right? Question number two and number three, you remember what's most important to you and how will you know when that happens? Those are questions that come just a little bit further down in the sales pro process, maybe seven, 10 minutes later, depending on the extent of the rapport, trust, credibility, or respect that you've built, because that's a question that delves a little bit more into their persona, delves a little bit more into their psyche and in their expectations. So you wanna make sure you have some rapport established, a foundation of rapport established so that you can ask that question three, uh, two and three. Now, we get to question number four. In, this, in the perspective of time, question number four comes much, much further down the road. Depending on the extent of time or depending on how the length of time that you've used in during the sales process, the demonstration, uh, showing them property, showing them the, what may or may not fit, explaining amenities, products, features, and so forth. This question is going to come a little further down the road, and you'll see why in a moment. You have to have a lot of trust, credibility, respect, rapport built to be able to ask this question, because question number four sounds a little bit like this. I'm curious, why would you have our company build your new home? Or why would you have our company sell this new home to you? Or, I'm curious, why would you invest in this piece of property from our company? Now what's the presupposition there? The presupposition is that they're going to buy a home, that they're going to invest in a piece of property. The other presupposition is that they are going to buy that home from you. I'm very curious, why would you buy this home from us? You see the presupposition there, the answer contained within the question. The other presupposition is, is that they are ready to buy, they're ready to make a decision, and you're ready to tie them down, to close them down, to get them to commit to a decision. What are the answers that you could receive? Well, you're gonna receive an answer on one or the other side of the spectrum here. The, the good side, actually they're both good, but this side over here, you're gonna receive an answer like, well, the reason that I would buy a home from you is because you were referred to us, we saw a project that you did down the street, uh, we really like the uh, salespeople that you have, we've seen the model, we've, we've seen the product, we've walked through it, we feel good about it. All of those kinds of answers are really, really good for you. Great information. What is it your job to do if you start hearing answers like that? It's your job to, are you ready for this? Your job to shut up. Yeah, it's your job not to interfere and let them stack all the evidence on top of each other uh, of why they would buy that piece of property or that home from you. Don't interrupt the process. They're in effect selling themselves. If you can get to the point where they're selling themselves and giving you all the reasons why they would buy that home, that piece of property from you and from your company and from your builder, then that's great. You're in a great place. Okay, so that's one side of it. The other side of it is a prospective buyer may say to you, I I'm not really sure that I am ready to make a decision. I'm not sure that I want to buy a piece of property from you. I've still got to think about it. I've still got some other things that I've got to look into. Hey, you know what? That's great information as well. What's your response back to them? Oh, okay, go home and sleep on it? No, 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 no. Your response back to them is, great, this is a huge decision, I respect that. Please help me know what other information I can provide to you to help you with that decision. What other information may I provide to you to help you with that decision? Notice that you didn't go in and say, well, when are you gonna make a decision? Or what do you have to sleep on? Or what are you waiting for? And I have, coached and, uh, many salespeople who will ask that. And I have actually taught seminars where salespeople will tell me that. That does not extend the uh, foundation of trust, credibility, respect, and rapport. Your response back to them is, listen, it's a big decision. I get that. It's a big decision for me when I did it with my house and with my family. Please help me know what other information I can provide to you. I'm very curious. I'm very interested. In fact, I care 
This is a team situation. What other information can I give to you? So the initial question, question number four of the Fab Five was, listen, I'm curious, I'm interested. Why would you invest in a piece of property with our company at this time? The presupposition there is that they're going to do this. Depending on the answer that they give you, you have plenty of information to go whichever way, extend the sales presentation, the sales conversation, to help them, to serve them, to continue to feed their motivating factors, provide the answers that they need, and keep going down the road to close a sale. Okay? So, Fab Five question number five is coming up very shortly.